Hi everybody, this is Mrs Sykes again. This time we are having a look at diseases. And this graph in front of you is the graph that shows how we fight disease and how we become immune to a disease. Just to talk you through what's happening, along the bottom here on our x-axis we have time. So that's the beginning and it's going longer and longer and longer and that's the last event that takes place. And then at the side we have concentration of antibody. Now an antibody is part of the immune system's way of fighting diseases. And these are released by white blood cells to define disease, usually bacterial. And these antibodies are released and they perfectly match the antigens of whatever your pathogen or disease is. So this is a measure of how much antibody there is in the bloodstream. So if there is lots of antibody, you're going to be higher up the graph. If there is none or very little, you're going to be down this end. So at the very beginning, you'll see there's absolutely no antibody whatsoever. It goes up once and actually it goes up a second time. Now this is a characteristic graph. You can be given this for absolutely any disease. And you need to know what is going on. Firstly, here there are no antibodies whatsoever. And somewhere along this straight bit, before it begins to rise, there will be a little arrow or some other indication that says that this is where the pathogen enters the body. So pathogen entry takes place here. And then there is still a little bit of a gap before anything happens. In this little bit of a gap, what is going on is called clonal expansion. Basically, the white blood cells that are going to be making your antibodies, the B cells, those white blood cells are going through the process of mitosis. They are copying themselves. As a general rule, if you are trying to fight any kind of war, the more soldiers you've got, the better you are going to do. So in this first stage between here and here, your white blood cell is copying itself lots of times, so it is easier for it to produce lots of antibodies. As the graph goes up, the white blood cells that we have got start to make antibodies. We get a few more antibodies being made because there are now a few more white blood cells. And we produce a maximum up to this point here. So if you were asked to describe the graph, and when we describe, we say what we see, it doesn't matter if you understand why it happens, you just say what you see. So if I give you a year 13 textbook and a diagram and say describe it, you can describe it no matter what that is, because you'll be able to tell me it's red and it goes up a little bit. But you might not have the faintest idea what that graph means. A describe question you literally say what you see. So after this point, there's a flat bit and it increases. And then you would want to be quoting this number. So at time, I'm going to read it off. And antibody concentration, blah, 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 blah. It reaches a peak. This is where your white blood cells know how to fight the infection. And they have won the first time. So you've got sick. You've been unwell, you've had all the symptoms, your white blood cells have copied themselves by mitosis and they have made lots of antibodies and they've killed off that bacteria or that pathogen and you are now starting to get better. Because you are now starting to get better, they stop producing antibodies, so the concentration slowly falls. Not all the way back to zero, usually, but falls a lot lower. This bit here can be days, weeks, or even 40 years. But it's usually shown with a teeny tiny little gap in an exam question. Then what happens is it goes up again. And this is because, and there's usually a second arrow on your diagram, you meet the pathogen again. So the bacteria that is trying to make you unwell comes back into the body and your white blood cells recognise it and quickly 
multiply again, and quickly make many antibodies. And it's a lot more antibodies than when we started. This is a lot, lot higher than our original peak. So again, if you were describing the graph, you would want to be quoting this number compared to this number. So it goes up to this one, blah, 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 and then up to this one. And those were the two most important numbers to be quoting. So very quickly we have responded and we have produced lots of antibodies and the concentration will remain high. And that will allow every single bacteria or pathogen in your body to be killed off. Now this happens so quickly, it should happen before you have any symptoms. So you shouldn't have any coughs, any sneezes. Basically, this happens so fast and so efficiently, it happens without you realising it, so you don't get to have a day off school for feeling poorly because you don't feel unwell. Now, what we're going to do next is we are going to have a look at a graph that instead of showing a disease, you getting over that disease, learning how to fight it, so the second time you see it, you don't get ill and you are now immune. What we are now going to do is see another graph which shows you what happens in terms of concentration of antibodies and time when you are given a vaccination. So, exactly the same graph. So, if this is about a vaccination, instead of this first point being where the real pathogen enters the body, what you've actually got here is some form of jab, some form of injection usually, to give you the vaccination. So you would now have dead or weakened versions, attenuated perhaps, dead or weakened versions of the bacteria or the virus entering your body. Your white blood cells go through mitosis, clonal expansion, they make extra copies of themselves, they practice fighting it, they produce lots of antibodies already. And then when they have decided that the threat is gone, because they're dead or weakened, there's no great threat anyway, but they've learnt how to fight it and they remember how to fight it, the concentration falls once again. And we go down to this waiting time. Now, it's possible you may never encounter that real disease again, or ever. But if you do, when the pathogen comes for real this time, the concentration of antibodies goes whoop, really high, and there will be large quantities of them released. It will be quick, and they will stay high. And you will be immune to this disease. So if you're having a vaccination so that you don't get sick because you're on a holiday or because it's the random set of jabs that they do in droves throughout secondary school, what it does is mimic or copy exactly the same way that your body normally fights infections. Instead of being sick, though, you're practicing without being unwell. Antibodies non-existent, then we have a pause while we copy, we go up high, then we fall once the reaction is over, then there's a pause point. When the pathogen comes back again, if it comes back again, it will go up really high, really quick, staying high. And that is how you become immune to a disease. And this kind of graph comes up a lot, so you should be able to recognise the shape if it ever comes up in an exam question.